Today, we're gonna build this cool cowboy hat stand to keep a cowboy hat stored safely so that we don't damage the shape. Plus, we need to keep this a secret because it is almost Christmas. I'm Jeff, and you're watching Home Built Workshop, so stick around. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. I hope all of you are doing awesome. I need your guys' help with today's project. It is the week before Christmas, and I gotta make a Christmas gift for my daughter. And I need your help to keep this a secret from her because, well, school's on Christmas break here, so she's home here with me, so I've gotta be sneaky with my time in order to be able to get this done. She recently got a new felt cowboy hat, and if you're familiar with cowboy hats at all, you'll know that you can't just take it off and flop it down anywhere you want you gotta be a little bit cautious as to how you store them so that they maintain their shape. So I wanna make her a hat stand that she can use to safely store her hat when it's not in use. I looked around the shop to find some materials and I found a piece of sassafras that I think is gonna work perfect for this project. I think sassafras is kinda cool because to me it looks like a combination of white oak and ash kinda of mashed together. And if you've ever worked with sassafras, you'll know that it also has a very interesting smell, kind of peppery, and it's kind of fun to work with. So let's get this piece loaded up on the CNC machine because, well, that's what I'm going to use to cut out these pieces. These pieces are just going to be some simple ovals, and there's really no reason you have to use a CNC machine. You could very easily cut these out using a bandsaw, but this is going to save me some time, and that's why I'm using this machine. After making sure my piece of sassafras was secured to the machine, all I had to do from there was to run the file. Cutting out these pieces took only eight minutes. I probably could have gotten away with running this file a little bit faster, but I don't like to break the bits. And really, eight minutes is not all that long. I'm fairly certain I could not have laid out these ovals by hand, then cut them out on the bandsaw, and ended up with a piece as nice and even as these are in eight minutes. From the CNC machine, I went straight to the bandsaw to cut the ovals loose from the waste pieces. When I built the file, I used some tabs which connect the piece that I'm cutting out to the scrap wood. That way when it's cut loose, it doesn't kind of fly around in there and get damaged by the bit. The tabs hold everything together until you actually cut them apart. There is a tiny little bit of residue left from the tabs that a flush trim bit in my router table quickly clean up. There's our two main pieces that are gonna make up this hat stand. The way this is gonna work is the larger piece is gonna be the base, and then we're gonna attach the smaller piece using some pipe fittings so that it stands up off of there, and then the hat will be able to be placed down onto this. Now these edges are kind of sharp, and I think that's probably the next thing that we should address. I wanna do a nice round over along this top edge of the top. Top edge of the top? doesn't even make sense. <laughs> anyway, I want to have a nice reveal so that we have kind of a cool looking round over on there. And I want to do the same thing to this, except we will have no little reveal on there. I forget what that's called, that profile where you round it over and then there's that little stepped reveal thingy. Leave that down in the comments. What is that called? Anyway, that's what I'm going to do to the base. And then we'll just put a slight round over along this edge. That way when the hat is sitting on there, there's no sharp edges that can poke into the side of the hat. That turned out pretty good. Now, we sand. Well, 
With these pieces sanded, I suppose we could just apply a finish and we'd be just about done. But to me, they look a little bit plain, so I want to add some embellishments on here just to make it look a little more personalized and not so plain. Let's use the laser engraver to make this piece a little more personalized. I've drawn up a file that I want to engrave on the lower portion of the base here. I think it's going to look really cool and give it a nice personalized touch. Now, if you've ever done any laser engraving, especially on wood, you'll know that as the machine burns your image into the wood, you can get some discoloration, some staining around your design, and that can really look kind of bad. Now, sometimes you can sand that off, but other times you have to sand so much you end up damaging your engraving. So in an effort to prevent that, I'm going to first give this a coat of spray on lacquer to kind of protect the surface the laser will burn all of that away and get down into the wood and hopefully the lacquer will help prevent staining on the top. Shake well before using. See, doesn't that look quite a lot like white oak and ash mixed together? That's what I get out of it. And now I'm ready to load this piece into the laser engraver and get it all lined up. Just in case you've never seen me use this machine before, this is the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt diode laser engraver. I made an entire video of setting this up. If you're interested in watching that, I'll put links down below in the description. I've had this machine for about a year now and I've used it on quite a few projects, both on and off camera, and it's performed great. Since this is a diode laser, it does come with a few limitations, mainly cutting and engraving certain colors of acrylic. I really wish this would cut clear acrylic, but due to the laser passing right through the clear, it just can't do that. I've used this machine for engraving in wood, leather. I've used it to cut wood and leather, as well as cardboard and other things if I'm making templates, and it's just been a great tool to have around the shop. To run this laser, I'm using a piece of software called Lightburn. Lightburn is made specifically for running laser engravers of all types, really. Now, it's not a free program. You do have to buy it. But if you're really looking to get into laser engraving, I recommend at least checking it out. With the engraving complete, I'll give the top just a light sanding with some 320 grit. Since I have that protective coat of lacquer on there, this removes all of the staining and the engraving turned out awesome. That looks cool. Before I put the final coat of lacquer on this, I want to mark out where I'm going to install these little pipe fittings. Remember, these are going to be the bases that attach this riser to the base. So I need to mark out the location. Now, if I was thinking ahead, I'd have built that location into my file and I could have just laser marked where these are going to go. But I didn't think about that, although it would have been a great idea. Now, in order to line that up, I'm just going to center this top piece on the base and I'll lightly trace out the location onto the base. Just a light pencil line, that way I can sand it off real easily. From there, I can just measure the same distance down on each piece to locate the pipe fittings. I'll just sand off that pencil line and now we can apply the final coats of lacquer. While I'm waiting for the lacquer to dry, I'm going to give these pipe fittings a coat of brown paint. Hopefully it'll match the engravings a little bit more than these weird galvanized bits. Well, I've let these pieces sit overnight to dry. It's still kind of early in the morning. Kiddo's still asleep. That way I can get this assembled. I really like how this engraving turned out. I think it's going to look awesome. Assembly is going to be very simple.
Now we just need to thread these pieces together. I like it. Let's test it out. That's going to work awesome. That turned out really good. Now we have a nice safe place to store this hat. Won't get damaged. And it's going to look cool. Sitting on a table or dresser or wherever this thing ends up sitting. And we got it done before Christmas. And as far as I know, we haven't been spotted yet. The challenge now is going to be getting this inside and wrapped up and tucked away till Christmas morning. Hope you enjoyed following along with this Christmas project. And remember, I need your help to keep this a secret until after Christmas. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Merry Christmas.